In this video, we are going to replicate a primary database to a replica database with MariaDB. Our primary database will be active with an insert on a table taking place every two seconds. For this exercise, we will be using two Debian droplets hosted with DigitalOcean. My name is Edward Stover. Let's begin. On the right side of the screen, you can see my notes, which will be available in a link in the description of this video. On the left side of the screen, we have the command line to our first node. This is a Debian Buster machine. This Debian machine has no additional software. The first step is to create a .vimrc file that will allow me to paste text with an alternative click of the mouse and to turn on syntax highlighting in Vim. Now, for each of my machines, I will add an SSH key so that I can send files between the servers. This will really only be necessary on the second node, but I will create it on the first node so that they are similar. Next, we change the mode of the key file so that only the owner can read it. These commands add to the .bashrc file. We source the .bashrc file to get those changes on the current session. You can see that we now have a color prompt. The next group of commands adds a swap file of 1 gigabyte. We check the swappiness level. It is currently at 60, but we want it to be at 5. To fix that, we add this vm.swappiness equals 5 to the end of the sysctl.conf file. We run the sysctl-system command to reload the parameters. Then we verify just the swappiness. That is correct. Free-m shows that we have a gigabyte of swap. Great. We are going to run an apt update to synchronize the apt package manager with its repositories. The apt upgrade command updates all of the currently installed programs to their latest versions. Now it is time to install some software, starting with GNU PG. We continue to install some other basic programs that we will need to install MariaDB. The next two commands will add MariaDB repositories to the apt package manager. For the previous commands to be recognized by apt, we need to update one more time. Now when we install MariaDB, we get the latest version. We check the MariaDB status to verify that we have the latest version installed. 10.5.9 is correct. Type Q to quit that. Now we go through the secure installation script. There is no root password, so just type enter. Unix socket authentication? No. Change root password? Yes. The password is password. Remove anonymous users? Yes. Disallow root login remotely? Yes. Remove test database and access to it? Yes. Reload privilege tables now? Yes. The next step is to check my IP address for local communication. In this data center, I know it will be on F1. The value needs to match the value I will be using in my custom parameters file right here. So all I need to do is edit this file and copy-paste this text into it and save the file. Then restart MariaDB and connect to it as root.
Here, I am just checking to see if the new parameters are in place. Our InnoDB buffer pool size matches the parameter, which is good. The log buffer size matches the parameter, which is good. The bind address is correct. So our values loaded properly and we are using UTF-8 characters, which we want. Let's continue with the next step. Here we create a little SQL script which adds some new users. Then we just run it. If you need to reverse those at any time, just run these commands here. Now we are going to create database objects. One function, one procedure, one table, and one event. The event calls the procedure every minute, and the procedure adds a new row to the table every two seconds. The next step, we export the data from the database using MySQL dump. Note the master-data flag in the command. If we edit the file, we see the most interesting line of code right here. With this line, the replica database will know that it needs to begin replicating from the master log position 10260 found on log file mysql-bin.0000001. The primary database is finished. It has a single table in the test DB schema that has a new row added to it every two seconds. With that, we can move to the replica server, here in red. The replica node is exactly the same as the primary node was before the MariaDB install. It is a Debian Buster machine with no additional software. Here, I will fly through all of the steps to get to the point where MariaDB software is installed and secured. Now we create a new parameter file with the replica server. We need to check that the IP address that the database binds to is correct. The add key command is an alias in the .bashrc file. This command adds our key to the SSH environment so that we can secure copy the dump file from the primary node without having to use a user password combination. Now we use SCP to copy the file from the primary server to the replica server. There is one edit we need to make to our dump file. Just before the change master command, we need to add a similar change master command to configure the connection to the primary server. Now we can import the dump file to create a copy of the test DB database. Let's log in to the database now and select count from the table important data. You can see that the important data table has just 24 rows. You can also see that it is static. If you run the command again, it will still only have 24 rows. To replicate the data from the primary database, 
All we need to do is run the start replica command. Now we run the count on the important data table again and we see 264 rows. That represents the time that has passed, 2 seconds per row. Let's take a look at the replica status. The forward slash capital G syntax shows the data in a way that is readable when there is limited horizontal space. Everything here looks good. If things go wrong and you want to run through this process again, begin with the stop replica command. Hmm, I am missing something here. Let's drop the database before we import it again. That eliminates the database. Now import the database again. Select count from important data. We are back to 24 rows. Start replica. Now, if we select count, you can see that it is growing. Let's do a select on the entire table to see if it has the My Sequence column without any missing values. In a quick glance, it looks okay. Let's check that it continues to grow. Yes, it looks pretty good. That will do it for this presentation. Thank you for watching.